Hank. Uh, Hank. What you go? Hey, hey, what guy? Who's it with you? Who's it with you? What are you doing? Hey, what's up? Yeah, well, you were asleep. You were asleep on the console that I do the podcast from. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, that's a comfortable podcast. Console. 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 What'd I say? Doesn't matter. What were you, why were you asleep? And my gosh, look at you. Your beard is all scraggly. You've been like, what have you been in here for days? I mean, it, it smells like you have been. Yeah, no, you know, you, I mean, you, you haven't been doing the podcast for a long time. So, you know, I just, I, I didn't have anything to do. So, I, you know, I thought I'd sit in here and, uh, you know, clean up. It's a mess. Well, you know, I cleaned up at first. And then, you know, it's been a long time. It has been, you know what? It's been a long time. It's been a long time, but I'm back. I'm back, baby. Hey. Yeah. Why are we so excited? Well, no, because people want the podcast. Don't you want the podcast to be back? Well, you know, I mean, yeah, give me something to do. I know. I don't know what you do without me. Well, I don't do nothing. I can tell. All right. Okay. It's good to see you, Hank. It's good to be back. Uh, so uh, let me tell you, though. Yeah, tell me what. So you know, you were you were gone. That's what I was gonna say. I know. How do you know? Because I'm you. All right. <laughs> because the show's called Talking to Myself, and that's what we do, right? That's right. You're talking to yourself, and you're talking to me, and you, and everybody else. Well, hey, let's first off, let's get Mr. Announcer guy in here to announce the show because you know it's a it's a new episode, and we're all excited. Okay. Oh, Mr. Announcer guy. Oh yes, James. How are you? I'm doing great, James. How are you? I'm doing great, too. It's good to be back. Yes, it is. We are back. The podcast, the James Arnold Taylor podcast, talking to myself, podcast is back. Don't start doing my job. Okay, so no, sorry. Okay, so you want to go ahead and do a big introduction or anything? We want, uh, I would, I would, let's get some music going. So Jerry the Music Man. Hey, Jerry the Music Man. Yeah, James. Cue the music for the Jadcast podcast. Don't start doing my job either, Jerry. Not for a second there, Mr. Announcer Guy. All right. Here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, talking to myself, the Jetcast. We're back, baby. Oh, yeah, we're back. Let me finish. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. So here he is, the guy that does all the voices, including this one. James Arnold Taylor! Thank you, Mr. Announcer Guy. You got it, James. I'm going to listen to this one with bated breath. What does that mean? I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. But it, you know, it's a saying. Yeah, I'm going to wait with bated breath. That's a weird saying. I don't, let's pretend you didn't say that. You got it, man. All right. So, uh, so Hank... Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you're doing the, you're gonna tell me stuff. Yeah, well, let's bring in Billy, though. Billy, hey, Billy! Oh, yes, Mr. James, sir, yeah, Mr. James, sir, welcome back, sir, yes. Billy, I've been gone a long time. Yes, you know, you have, Mr. James, sir. I think your voice has changed. I think it's gotten deeper within this time. Really? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry. So, how have you been? You and, you and Hank have been uh, keeping the place uh, kind of a mess, kind of a pigsty. That's uh, nice. Well, no, you know, we make onion sandwiches in here, and then we do uh, stuff, and we play the games. Yeah, we play our video games, and uh, we surf on the webs. You, you guys are using my computer and my stuff and my, my console. Console? Con console? No, yeah, forget it, Billy. Don't worry about it. Just um, Anyways, uh, well, it's good to have you all here, and it's good to be back on the James Arnold Taylor podcast. We've got, oh, man, so I got stories to tell you all. There's been so, it's like, it's, it's like a new season. I wonder, we, I, we could just call it season two, but uh, I, I mean, it was around this time of year, last year, that I started the show. So I, actually, it's been, so you know what? Let's say it's season two. It's season two of the James Arnold Taylor podcast. What do you say? Uh, episode one of season two, but it's like episode 34, I think, 33 or 34 or something like that of the actual podcast in real life. Yeah, real life. Because you live in real life. Blah. <laughs> All right. 
Anyways, um, yeah, so it's a new season here at the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. We're starting over, baby. And uh, all of this, so, okay, so for the last several months, I have, over the summer and everything, oh, there's been so much going on, and I've tried to get a little podcast in here and there, and, and so many of I've heard you all. I've heard you. Please know. I've heard you. I'm so thankful. Here's the good news about me leaving. It did give uh, a lot of people a chance to catch up. And those people, it's like, nothing it's just like nothing because there's you know some people if there's a lot even though i haven't been podcasting for only a year and i've only done 30 some odd episodes there's a lot there because they're long episodes now uh, that is something with the new the new season is not going to be just 90 minutes every time this this one may go i don't know i don't know how long this is going to go this is going to go as long as we go and then when we're done we'll go some more no i don't know what that means I wish you made it with the thing. Yeah, exactly right, Hank. No, 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 that's what he was saying. It was the thing, and then you're going along. Now you're talking like Hank. Boy, I've been gone too long. Yeah, you. That's that's been your inspiration, Billy? That's who has been guiding you and teaching you while I've been gone? Well, yes, sir, Mr. James. Yes, well, I know it's Mr. Hank, sir. Just Hank. Oh, now you're letting him just call you Hank. No, whatever, I don't know. Okay, so anyways, there's, uh, th- I, I was at Comic-Cons, I was doing shows. I was making movies. Well, actually, I'm I'm making uh I'm making a movie. I'm going to be in a movie uh, this week. I'm leaving. I'm leaving again this week. See, that's the thing that kind of drives me crazy, is I'm still uh, leaving and going on the road and doing stuff. I will be this week going out to the desert, to the uh, what is it called? It's the um, Trona Trona Pinnacles. I don't know way out in the middle of nowhere, out, uh, past Death Valley and Barstow and all those places out, out here in California in the desert to uh, be in a movie, a, fan, a Star Wars fan film. My good friend Jamie Costa is making a Obi-Wan Kenobi fan film. Now, before you all get excited, I am not playing Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Jamie is playing Obi-Wan. And let me tell you something. He looks, I mean, man, he's, he's done the hair and makeup and the, beard and everything. He looks just like Ewan McGregor in this thing. It's pretty, very impressive. I haven't heard him do the voice yet, so we'll see what he does. But he did a Han Solo fan film last time. Uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before that was very impressive and very good. And he was fantastic in it. And he did a great Harrison Ford uh, Han Solo. So I know he'll do a great Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan Kenobi. I do my own Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I've been, so for those of you that are just joining us and may not know about who I am or what I do, I'm a voice actor in Hollywood. I do voices for cartoons and movies and video games and TV shows and radio and television, all that stuff. And I've been the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi for coming up on 18 years now in various forms in uh, cartoons and video games and toys and films and things. And uh, it's very exciting. It's an exciting life being in the world of Star Wars because I grew up with Star Wars and now... I, for the last almost two decades of my life, have been an an actor in Star Wars. I've been in all the Disney films. I've provided voices in all of them. People always go, well, who were you? There's tons. There's so many voices in each one of them. Um, and you can hear me. And if, if, if you sat down and watched, you know, uh, Force Awakens, Rogue One, Last Jedi, Solo uh, with me, I could sit there and point out every place where I am. And you'd hear me. And you go, oh, yeah, that is James. But to try to explain every one of them, uh, it's, you know, anyways. So, uh, so very involved. And of course, I've been the host of Star Wars Weekends for many years and the host of Star Wars Celebration. And I've interviewed everybody and, and know pretty much everybody there is to know in the world of Star Wars. It's very exciting. And now this is, this will be my second Star Wars fan film. I was in another Star Wars fan film years ago called Hughes the Force by my good friend J.C. Reifenberg, who made a, a, a Star Wars fan film that was a, a mashup between Star Wars and John Hughes movies. So he, primarily he took Weird Science and he combined it with Star Wars. And if you all know Weird Science, which is a, a very funny movie as a young man, I, I that was one of my favorite movies with my friends. Why wouldn't it be, right? These two dorks, and I was a dork, a nerd, uh, create a woman a beautiful woman in their in their with their computer in their bedroom they create this you know like frankenstein's monster and uh and then she has magical powers and uh, makes them cool that was a pretty neat story so anyway so jc took that basic premise and turned it into a um 
a funny one with a Princess Leia action figure, which was great. And I got to play Obi-Wan Kenobi in that fan film. And uh, very good. I think you can find it online. I don't know if it's on YouTube. I think it's on Vimeo for sure. But uh, you can you can Google Hughes the Force, like John Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S, the Force. And it is a fan film. And you can see uh, old uh, James Arnold Taylor as old Obi-Wan in that. But in this one, uh, I, which I will be doing later this week, I will not be Obi-Wan, even though it is an Obi-Wan fan film. Isn't that weird? I will actually be playing the bad guy. Dun, dun, dun. Now, I can say all this because um, they've kind of given that information out. Yeah. So um, I'm playing a character. Uh, I think they've said the name. I don't know. But his name is Legus. Legus. L-E-E-G-U-S, I believe is how they spell it. And um, he's a bad dude. He's a bad dude. And so that'll be fun. You'll all be like, wow. So someday when this is done, I'm, I imagine within the next, you know, six months or so, this uh, film will be finished uh, and produced and stuff because we're just shooting it this weekend. And uh, and then you'll be able to watch a movie with uh, James on camera. See, now I'm a voice actor. I don't normally do on camera. They call, What's the difference? They call on camera means that your face is on camera. Voice acting is just your voice. And I'm primarily a voice actor and have, have been in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, things. And But on camera, I've only been in a few things. I was in the movie Comic Book the Movie. Do you know that movie? If you don't know it, check it out. Comic Book the Movie. I, I don't know if it's available on you know Netflix or any place. But that was uh, my good friend Mark Hamill, who you all know as, uh, of course, Luke Skywalker. Uh, made this movie called Comic Book the Movie, and he, he featured a bunch of voice actors. And so, uh, you know, everybody Jim Cummings, Jess Harnell, uh, I believe Rob Paulson's in there, uh, Lori Allen, uh, many, many, uh, Roger Rose, a lot of f- famous voice actors are in it. And I play basically like a, a Spielberg or Katzenberg uh, kind of uh, multi billionaire film guy, young hotshot film. Uh, guy, guy that runs his own studio, that uh, uh, has a part in this, and, and a very funny. I have a very funny scene with with Mark, and um, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. But that's uh, so. But and I've been in other things. I was in a movie that I made with uh, friends for a film festival called the One Sixty Eight Film Festival, where you have a hundred and sixty eight hours to write or to to come up with the idea, write it, shoot it, produce it, finish it, a short film, and we did that. And we actually won a bunch of awards. We got best comedy. We got best script. We got um, uh, all sorts of stuff. I was up for best uh, supporting actor. I, I I did not win, although I was the fan favorite. But I did not win. But it's a movie called The Audition, and it's on. Um, you can see pieces of it on my YouTube channel, I think. And then the full film is on, I think, IMDb or something. It's called The Audition, and I play a guy. Uh, in an audition for a voiceover thing. And it's very funny. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go. So, and that was actually, it was a Christian film festival and they gave us a piece of scripture and we had to come up with a movie idea based on the scripture. Isn't that crazy? And we did, and we made it about an audition. So you, <laughs> you're like, wow, how does that work? You'll just have to watch it and see. So I, you know, I'm, I'm in little short films every once in a while. I'm in uh, movies and TV shows every once in a while on camera. Um, and this will be fun for me because I get to play something completely different than I normally am too, which was fun. So that'll be this week. Now, the rough part about it is it's out in the desert and food is always an issue for me because of, uh, so if you don't know my story, uh, 15 years ago, almost, almost 15 years ago, I was exposed to black toxic mold and uh, lost my voice. It's like a superhero story. The funny thing is, is I'm the Flash. I'm, uh, I've played Spider-Man. I've played uh, Green Arrow. I've played all these wonderful uh, superhero characters, Magneto, Silver Surfer, uh, Cyclops. I've been, I've been so many different characters uh, as, as a voice actor. And this is like my own superhero story. So, uh, you know, almost 15 years ago, I was exposed to black toxic mold, mold Stachybotrys. And I lost my voice. I got very sick. My immune system was totally suppressed. And so that is why I am always eating. I eat as healthy as I can. I don't eat any sugar. I don't eat any dairy. I don't eat any gluten. I don't eat processed foods. I eat pretty much all organic wherever, however I can. I don't uh, really drink. I don't, uh, I drink water. In fact, hey, are you all drinking your water? Let's drink your water. Come on, here we go. Whoa. 
that's good water. And we say that every time we have some water as homage to my wife's grandmother who would sip water and say, that's good water. Anyways, um, so got very sick and had to change my diet, had to change my lifestyle. So when I travel, which I've been traveling a lot lately, just got back from New York Comic Con, um, diet is tricky. For me, and so it's gonna. The trickiest part this week, this weekend, while we shoot this movie, is because we're gonna be out in the middle of nowhere. Is me making sure I have enough food and good food and food that I can eat, um, as well as uh, you know, I also I do the voices for Fox Animation Domination Sunday Night, The Simpsons, Family Guy, and Bob's Burgers, along with Bless the Hearts, the new show. And if so, if you hear Bless the Hearts this Sunday on Fox, that's me. But if you hear the Simpsons this Sunday on Fox. That's also me. I do both. So when I do that work, like I just did some of it just earlier before I started the podcast today, I am I patch in with them through an ISDN line, which is a complicated bunch of letters that just basically means it's a phone patch that is a high quality phone patch. And I patch into the network and it sounds like I'm there and I record the promos live with them. So when I when I I'm on the road, I have to do it a different way. I use this program called IPDTL. I and then P, like Paul or Peter. Uh, D, David, TL, you got the rest. IPDTL. Go to IPDTL.com. If you're a voice actor and you're wanting to know about great ways to record uh, where you're doing stuff where the client is one place and you're another place or something, IPDTL is a very affordable, very simple very easy to use way. I get nothing for saying this, but it's what I use. And so I, I patch into IPDTL. There's also Source Connect and I have Source Connect as well. I have all of them. See, you know, I've been a voice actor long enough. I know that I have to have all of them. So I have Source Connect, I have ISDN and I have IPDTL. I also have the ability to do a phone patch or just record straight up and, and just give it to them and send it to them via, you know, Dropbox or something. So when I'm gone, like I will be in this tiny hotel in the middle of the desert in the middle of nowhere that hopefully has good wi-fi i will patch into fox and i will go in and i will make a booth some of you follow me on instagram if you don't follow me on instagram or twitter please do so it is jat actor j-a-t actor at j-a-t actor and you can follow me on all my social media you can go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com and find links to all of it as well but anyways, and follow me on social media on my uh, YouTube channel as well. And I believe you can go to Jat Actor and search that as well for YouTube and you can find me there. Uh, you can go to jatactor.com, J-A-T actor.com or jamesarnoldtaylor.com. Either one works. Look at that. So uh, anyways, um, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, on my social media, I, I posted uh, while I was in New York uh, last week, me making a closet, a booth out of my closet in New York. And I did all my sessions from there. So any promos that you've been hearing uh, over the last week or so on Fox for The Simpsons and Bob's Burgers were done in a closet in New York City. (laughs) Isn't that crazy? That's the life of a voice actor. That's the glamorous life of a voice actor. Everybody always wants to be a voice actor. They don't realize it's, uh, you know, you at weird times of the day patching in on, on, you know, in closets or cars or wherever you can get a quiet space to make a booth and do stuff if you travel. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, The first thing I do when I get into my hotel room this weekend is I will, I say this weekend, although it's Wednesday that I'm leaving. It's like a three hour drive out into the desert and all that. I will go to my room and I will grab all the blankets, all the pillows off of everything. I will call room service, ask them to give me more blankets and more pillows. And I will create a booth in the closet or somewhere in there And the biggest key to making a booth when you're on the go is making it dead, damp, dampened uh, from sound. So again, you don't want echo. You want it to be like this. So I'm talking to you right now because I'm in my home studio here and there's no echo in here because I have soundproofing all over the place. When you go into a regular room, like a hotel room, it's an echo chamber. So you have to dampen it. You have to find a little corner where you can make it and, and dampen the sound. And so that's what I'll be doing. That's the first thing I do. It's a little stressful because I also have to know all my lines for this film. I have to be ready for this film. I have to have costume ready. I have to have makeup ready. I have to have my hair ready. I have to have all that stuff ready. I have to be ready to get up early in the morning. I have to take care of my voice for the film. But then I also, and we're going to be out in the desert all day, all day from like six in the morning to six at night. And I have to make sure I don't lose my voice or I don't mess my voice up, I should say. 
because I have to later in, in the day be able to do those Simpsons. You know, this guy, Mr. Announcer guy, basically. So anyways, that's what's going on with James and, uh, and what's been going on. And uh, it's all very exciting. Uh, Hank, you have fallen. Say, Hank, Hank. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting. All right. I thought it'd be very exciting, Mr. James. Well, you didn't say anything. Well, no, only because that's in my job. Here, I just sit here and I listen intently. Very good, Billy. That's very nice of you. That's great. I do have a question, though. Yes. How is New York, Mr. James, sir? Just James. James, sir, James. James. New York, James. I'm in a New York state of James. <laughs> okay. New York was great. You know, look, New York is one of my favorite cities on the planet. I love New York. Why do I love New York? It, because it's just always moving and shaking and bustling and grooving and moving. And you can get wonderful food there. There are wonderful restaurants, wonderful vegan restaurants. I go to vegan restaurants. So, you know, I'm not a vegan anymore. I was a vegan for eight years, but I still kind of am a vegan at heart. More water. Everybody drink your water. It's one of rule one here at uh, James Arnold Taylor podcast is drink your water and deep breathe. What can you do as a listener on the James Arnold Taylor podcast? You can drink water and you can breathe deep because you're not doing the talking. You're just listening, man. So breathe deep. Why do we breathe deep? Because it's so good for your body. Okay. Whether you want to be a voice actor or not, because this show is not just about voice acting. I happen to be a voice actor and I talk about that, but this is about getting you into a mindful, uh, a good state of mind, being mindful with your life and your time. You're listening to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. So right now, everything is all right, man. That's the thing. That's the other thing. I am an ambassador of inspiration. And what I want to do is I want to inspire you and I want to lift you up and pick you up and make you feel good about your life and what you're doing and the choices that you're making and help you make better choices if you are stuck. I wrote a book about it, JAT 365, 365 Daily Inspirations for the Pursuit of Your Dreams. And uh, you can get that on amazon.com. It's I think it's about 15 bucks. It's not too bad. It makes a good... Uh, gift holidays are coming up can you believe that wow um or you can see the entire book for free and do a page a day for 365 days with me on my youtube channel go to my youtube channel go to youtube and search for james arnold taylor or i believe jat actor you can search for either one and you can find and then click on the playlists and look at the playlist jat 365 you i am i basically am giving you my book for free there you have to watch it all um, but you'd have to read it if you bought it, but you can get it for free. If you're like, James, I don't have $15. Look at, this is how much I care is that I'm, cause I'm, you know, I'm not making money off the book. I wish I was, but I'm not, but, uh, it, I wish I was only in that because obviously, yes, everything you do, you should want to have a return on it. You want to have, you know, passive income wherever you can as well. Why? Because it's important, you know, it's important to be able to make a living. So, but I wrote the book as a passion and I wrote the book as a, a thing to where it would help people more than anything. And so that's why uh, I, I have it basically for free on my YouTube channel, or you can buy the actual book. See, I prefer you actually buying the real book because then you can journal in it because it's a journal. It's not just a book, it's a journal. And by the end of the year, you have a journal of your thoughts, your dreams, your goals, and how you're going to go about achieving them. Because that's the other thing. A lot of people can tell you a lot of positive things, make you all puffed up and feel good, but give you no actual answers as to how to pursue these things. I always try to give you at least answers as to how to pursue things. Why? Because I've been there. I've gone through it. I tell you what works for me. I tell you what doesn't work for me. And uh, that's that's a very important part of it. So anyways, um, back to Billy's question. Well, thank you, Mr. James. Just James. Sir James a lot. Okay. We've done that joke so many times now. I know, but I can't ever think of anything new to say, you know? Yeah. Okay. Chat one, two, three. Okay. okay. That's fine. Anyways, um, went to New York Comic Con. It was my first time at New York Comic Con. A lot of big celebrities at New York Comic Con. I held the door for Paul Rudd and I held the door for Tom Hiddleston. Paul Rudd uh, and his people said, thank you very much. Tom Hiddleston, I held the door. I was coming through a door. And he was coming out the door and I opened it right as he was about to go through. And, uh, and he gave me the weirdest look and like, who are you and why are you holding this door for me? And then he didn't say thank you, but that's okay. It's fine. You know, he's Loki. He doesn't need to. Although I was wearing a Johnny Test shirt and he may have been looking at my Johnny Test shirt thinking, I like Johnny Test. He's very good. A lot of rumors Johnny Test is coming back. Has anybody heard that? There are some rumors. I'll tell you what, if uh, if you want Johnny Test to come back, make sure you let the folks that make it know that they should use me as the voice because I I am Johnny Test. But you never know in this day and age. So uh, let them know. 
it would be great to have James Arnold Taylor back as the voice of Johnny Test, if indeed it's coming back. No idea. Uh, I get asked these questions all the time. You know, will there be a new Ratchet and Clank game? I don't know. I'm just the actor. I'm the guy they... The, so voice actors are the ones they call last because they animate, they do... So, well, well, we voice the scripts first, generally speaking, but we're like the last people to know anything. So uh, everybody's always asking. But anyway, so yeah, maybe Tom Hiddleston liked my, uh, my Johnny Test shirt because I, I was wearing a Johnny Test shirt. Anyways, a uh, good time in uh, New York Comic Con. And... Uh, did I hang out or see anybody else there? Well, my friend Marshall Julius. Marshall wrote a book. It's called Vintage Geek. And I highly recommend you pick up the book Vintage Geek. It is it is such fun. I'm going to grab it here. One second. 1,000 Intriguing Questions and Fascinating Answers for Nerds of All Ages. It's a Vintage Geek quiz book by Marshall Julius. It's coming out in the States very soon. And I actually wrote, I wrote a question in it. And so I'm in the book. So that's neat. So if you support James, you got to support Marshall. And I got to meet Marshall because we've been friends uh, for a while on social media, but never got to actually meet. And we got to meet at Comic-Con and he was gracious enough to just come out over to my table where I was signing and wait in line with everybody to meet me, which was very sweet of him. And then the folks at Tops, I got to go see the folks at Tops and I got to sign some things with them. And that was very cool because I love the folks at Tops. Mark Von Olin and all of them made it a fun time for me. And I was sitting next to my friend Lorraine Newman, who is an amazing talent in the world of voiceover. And Jennifer Hale, who is another amazing talent. And Tom Kenny. SpongeBob. Oh, Patrick. Um, and that was fun. So uh, we had a great time. And we did Twisted Tunes. And I'm sure that'll show up on online at some point. Somebody will have taped it and put it up there. Twisted Tunes is where we take a script and we took the Dark Knight script and we read it in our cartoon voices, the character voices that we are known for. So the Joker would be played by, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is fun. Uh, so anyway, so we had a lot of fun doing that stuff. And uh, New York was great. And I was there for a long time. It was a long, it was a four day Comic Con. Most cons are two days. A lot of the cons I'd been doing before that. So I did a Nashville one. I was out there in Nashville at ICCC, three C's. And if I met you at, at Nashville, um, boy, howdy, did I have a good time. I love, it was actually, it's not in Nashville. It's in Franklin, Tennessee. And man, do I love Franklin, Tennessee. I do. And I love the people in Tennessee. So if you're from Tennessee, God bless you. If you're not from Tennessee, God bless you too. But uh, I'm just saying, what a great time and what a beautiful, beautiful state you have. So uh, I was there. I was in New Mexico at New Mexico Comic Con. I was in uh, Atlanta. I was in Tampa Bay. I was I was in so many different Comic Cons. Here's the point: they were all great and fun, but they kind of pulled me away from doing podcasts. So now the podcast is back. I'm going to try to get back to doing a podcast on a weekly basis, maybe even more. I don't know. But here's the other key: the podcasts are not going to be as long. Okay, they're not going to be as long. In fact, we are at the uh, 30 or so mark coming up on half an hour already. So we're going to start looking. Let's look at emails. Let's get Bob in here. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob, 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 Bob. Oh, yes, 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 James, yes. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, hey, Bob. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing doobity dee and doobity doo. I'm, I'm doing very well. Yes, we have a lot, oh, a lot, a lot of emails. No, I know. A lot of people write. A lot of people go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com. They click on the chat show link, and then they go to the drop-down menu, and they choose a topic. Very important that you choose a topic. It says choose a topic. Don't just leave it on choose a topic. Pick something. If it's the JackCast podcast that you want to ask me a question on, then that's your topic. If you want to ask me a general question, then a general question, whatever it is. But you go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com. You click on the chat show link. You click on the uh, uh, choose a topic. You choose a topic. Then you write me an email. And then it comes here on the show. And then Bob flags it. And then he reads it to me, which is exactly, which is exactly what the Nazis were thinking with the city of Tannis. No, sorry. That reminded me of the way Indiana Jones says, which is exactly what the Nazis are looking for. Um, Abner Ravenwood. There you go. Anyways, uh, sorry. I, I have to do my jet tangents because if I don't, it's no fun, right? Okay. So, uh, Bob, what kind of, uh, <laughs> you're laughing at me, Bob. Well, indeed I am. That's, you threw a Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, reference in there out of nowhere and, and then started talking about Nazis. I know it sounded kind of weird. 
I was just saying, that's what oh, Indiana, I was going to say Obi-Wan Kenobi, Indiana Jones is talking to the two guys at the beginning of the movie, and they're giving the whole thing about the Well Souls and what's going on and all that, and the staff, or headpiece to the staff of Ra. And, uh, and when I said, which is exactly, uh, here's the thing. I've seen Raiders of the Lost Ark over, wait for it, 400 times. <laughs> I know, Bob, I'm a nerd. Oh, you in doobity dee you sure are. And so when I hear myself say or somebody else say something that sounds like a line from that movie, it's what I think of. So the way I said, which is exactly, which is exactly, it sounded like Indiana Jones saying, which is exactly what the Nazis are looking for. And so that's why I said it. Okay, Bob, sorry. Off on too big of a tangent. Let's go to the emails. What do you got for me, Bob? Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo, yes. This one is from Johannes from Australia. Johannes. Johannes, that's a great name. Oh, in doobity dee in doobity doo, yes. Johannes says, Dear Jat, firstly, your podcast is amazing and you really inspire me. Well, that's wonderful, Johannes. I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, I listen to it every other day on the drive to work. Well, that's good. Well, okay. So, you, I mean, you know, I need to start making more episodes so you can listen even more. I'm an aspiring actor and voice actor, so I find what you talk about really helpful in that sense, but even more helpful in growing a positive attitude and a healthy mindset. I've started starting my day with meditation, positive imaging, and prayer, like you do, and it's been really good in keeping me grounded during the day in who I am and what I want to be, so thank you. That's, uh, see, now that is it. That is exactly, Johannes, that's wonderful. All of you that listen to the James Arnold Taylor podcast, it's about starting your day the positive way. It's about ending your day the positive way. It's about living your life throughout your day in a positive way, but not crazy positive. Like, isn't it wonderful? Realistic positive. Now, you know, give me an example though. Uh, there was an email that came in, uh, Bob, I saw an email when going through the emails before recently where, uh, somebody sent me a really positive email saying how much they enjoyed the shows. And then they hit an episode, uh, episode 29 specifically, where they felt I was being negative and they, they kind of came down on me in the email and they weren't being the coolest in, in the email, in, in my opinion. But in their opinion, I was being negative in the show. So I went back and I listened to the episode and I was not being negative at all. Uh, I gave my review of Galaxy's Edge in that episode and my review of Galaxy's Edge is it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But that's not negative, you see. But this person took it as though I was being very negative. It said I ruined their day and all of this. And, and it was like, there's a difference between positive gee whiz, all right, and realistic life-giving opinions. And sometimes our opinions won't match up. But here's the thing to remember in life, everybody. And the person that wrote that, if they're listening, they know who they are. Um, I cannot be James, Mr. Positive, 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 over the top positive all the time. I try to be James, realistic positive. And realistic positive James is also, it has his own opinions. That's why I have a podcast. That's why you listen as you want to hear my opinions. But here's the thing to remember. Here's the big important thing to remember. We all will not agree on everything 100% of the times. It's impossible. We won't. My wife and I don't agree on 100% of the time, but we probably 99%. But most people, you might agree with me 75, 80% of the time. But if I'm not agreeing with you and you're not agreeing with me, it doesn't mean I'm being negative. Okay. Big difference. Big difference. Not being negative. Go back and listen to the podcast is what I would say to the person. I'm not being negative. I just said, you know what? It wasn't what I was expecting, but everybody's going to love it. I spent the rest of the podcast explaining how I thought everybody else that loves new Star Wars will love Galaxy's Edge. People that love old Star Wars might be a little disappointed. And I woke up the next day a little like, oh, you know, it hit me and it struck me that, gosh, that wasn't exactly what I thought it was. But at the time I was like, wow, this is fantastic. So that's not being negative. That's being honest. That's having an opinion. We all have them. Okay. And I have a right to mine and it doesn't mean I'm negative. And I listened to the rest of that podcast, by the way, the, the uh, episode 29, most of that podcast I spent talking about. In, in improving your life through health and breathing and exercise and faith and uh, family and fun things. It was a very positive episode. So I'm so sorry that somebody, I, and truly from the bottom of my heart, the person that wrote that, if you're listening and you know who you are, I'm so sorry you took it as negative because I'm not trying to come down on you now. That's why I'm not mentioning your name or anything because it wasn't, it wasn't negative. And, and I don't assume people don't like my podcast because of my faith, which was another comment the person said. You, you misheard what I said in the podcast. You need to go back and listen because that's not what I said. Uh, I said that I don't, I, I assume people of other faiths may deal with some of the things I deal with with my faith. And I, 
I know what I deal with because I'm the one that gets the cards and letters. You don't. So you can't make assumptions or assessments. Okay. Off on a tangent there, but you, you know, you can't be golly gee whiz positive all the time. You just can't. And if you're not, that doesn't mean you're being negative. Okay. It's not always the opposite. Sometimes we're just here. Or sometimes our opinions are just different than everybody else's. But that doesn't mean we're being negative. But you can't be overly positive with is what I'm saying. I'm talking about like that. Everything's wonderful when the sky is collapsing around you. Kind of positive. That, you know, positive is the glass is half full, not half empty. And that's where things like meditation help. That's where things like being mindful and stopping. When you start going down a path that is not the healthiest or the most positive, you stop and you catch yourself and all of that. And so you have positive imaging, as he's talking about, and prayer. I'm a Christian. Prayer is extremely important to me. And so that's it. So yes. So now, okay. So uh, he has more to say though, right? Yes. You kind of interrupted. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, it's okay. I'm giving you a bad time. Okay. He says, secondly, I've just listened to an episode where you talk about doing a podcast with Catherine Tabor on living as a Christian in Hollywood. I think that would be an awesome podcast. and I would personally find it really helpful as someone who believes in Jesus and wants to be a creative in Hollywood as well. I often ask myself whether it will be possible to pursue my dreams and stay true to myself. Lastly, a question. If you were at Hogwarts, which house would you be sorted into? Thanks so much and God bless Johannes. Uh, that's right, Johannes. Yes, pronounce it right. No, no, and yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> well, yes. Uh, Cat Tabor, Catherine, the uh, Padme Amidala, on uh, Clone Wars, and I uh, both have talked about doing a podcast. You know, we actually recorded an episode. We recorded a um, uh, like a trial episode that we just kind of did as a a, a mock episode to see once. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever put it out, um, but we we may do something. I would love to do something with her, and uh, but our schedules have been such to where it's been really hard. But if we ever get a chance to do that, we will do that uh, about living um, a Christian life or, you know, really just kind of living an, an ethical or moral life, regardless of your religious beliefs in Hollywood can be very hard because of the fact that Hollywood is just kind of swimming in all the stuff of like, you know, whatever is hip and cool at the time is what Hollywood's doing. And uh, if you're an actor in it and you're trying to not get caught up in all the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, excuse the expression, um, of Hollywood, then uh, you need a base. You need a grounding. You need something in your life to help keep you grounded. And so that certainly is what um, my faith is for me, uh, Johannes. And uh, so, yes, thank you. Lastly, your question about Hogwarts, uh, which house would I be sorted into? Uh, you know, uh, I know some Harry Potter. I've I've seen all the movies. Uh, my daughter has read all the books. I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember um, what are all the houses. Um, uh, so uh, let me just Google it. Hog, Hogwarts houses quiz. Oh, there's a quiz. Should I take it? How about if I take the quiz, which Hogwarts house would you be in? I'm going to do this with you all right now, okay? Okay, it says, uh, you're making a PowerPoint presentation for a class project. You take charge, organize everyone, and end up doing almost everything. Do as little as you can. Ah, the perks of group projects. Do a little of everything. Do most of the research and writing, but let other people make it flashy. I would do the first. Take charge, organize everyone, and end up doing almost everything. Yeah, I know who I'm going to be already from that answer. Don't you? You guys know who I'm going to be. Um, but, oh no, but which house? Okay. So this tells me which house. Okay. Next, next. Do you cheat in class? Absolutely not. Next. I don't even need to read the other ones. Although it says you try not to, but sometimes it's the only way to stay afloat. No. Yes. A fair amount. Everybody does. No. If you can count sharing answers and helping friends who are struggling. Uh, okay. So that's a, yeah, but if you count sharing answers, no, no, see, I wouldn't share answers. No. Okay. So absolutely not. All right. All right. Uh, here's the next question. I'm doing the Hogwarts house. Which Hogwarts house would I be in quiz? Thanks to Johannes asking this question. Here we go. When you die, ooh, you hope to be wealthy enough to provide for many generations of your family, have achieved success and travel the world, be surrounded by lifelong friends, have learned everything there is to know. Oh my goodness. Um, I think when you die, you hope to be surrounded by lifelong friends. I think I think that's probably the most important to me. Yes. Uh, I mean, I would love to pass down wealth and stuff to generations, but being surrounded by everybody is the most important thing. You see a group of bullies picking on a nerd. You go up to the bullies and yell in their faces, find the nerd afterwards and reach out to him, sympathize with the nerd, but walk on by. Think it's a little funny. Ooh, 
Um, I think at this point in time, I might go up to the bullies and yell in their faces. I think that that's what I would do. So that's what we're going to say. All right. Next. Click continue to the quiz. All right. Which of these, I, oh, there's 12 questions, by the way. Which of these entertainment professions most appeals to you? <laughs> Agent, screenwriter, major movie star, entertainment lawyer. Well, I think we all know the answer to that one. I would be a major movie star because it's the only, it doesn't have voice actor in there. If it had voice actor, I don't care if I'm a major movie star. I just, I'm an actor. So that's the one I had to pick. How do you flirt with someone you like? Well, I don't, I'm married. Uh, you don't, you don't. You tell someone straight up if you like them. Uh, you try to have a real deep conversation. You make witty jokes and smile coyly to charm their pants off. You deliver a great cheesy pickup or wink at them. Um, okay, but when I was dating my wife, I would make witty jokes and smile coyly to charm charm them, yes. So that's what I would have done. All right. In high school, your favorite extracurricular was student government, a sports team, a student club, a debate, or academic team. Uh, well, I was in band, so we'll say a student club, Okay. You get home from the corner store and notice you were a little undercharged. You drive back to the store to pay the difference. Don't worry about it. It's only a few dollars off. We'll tell them the next time you shop there if you ever go back. Can't believe your luck. Uh, gosh, I might drive back to the store and pay the difference. I really might. That's kind of me. I'm, I'm such a nerd, aren't I? Okay, that's what I'm going to say. Your idea of a worthwhile summer vacation is hanging out and catching up with friends back home parachuting or diving off the cliffs of Acapulco, curling up with a good book on the porch, summer school, summer vacation. I guess hanging out and catching up with friends back home. You hear that a girl in your class just switched to writing the same essay topic you've been working on since September. You make an appointment with the professor and slip in how you came up with the idea first. Hmm. Resent her from afar, but say nothing. <laughs> Don't care. Your good work will speak for itself. Confront her and ask her not to copy your idea. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Uh, don't care. Your good work will speak for itself. There it is. That's the answer. How do you get your time alone when you want it? Tell your friends it's reflection time and retreat to your room. Cancel on a movie date with friends. Disappear for long periods without a word. Do errands or go for a drive. Well, everybody listening to the podcast knows the answer to that, James. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you think I can't I, uh, disappear for long periods without a word? Well, that's what you did here. No, 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 no. But... Um, tell your friends it's reflection time and need to retreat to your room. I think I've been honest with everybody. I told everybody here at the James Arnold Taylor podcast, I was going to be taking a break. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Okay. Uh, finally, this is the last question for the Hogwarts house, uh, quiz. When planning a group trip, you are the one who worries most about travel plans and lodging. You probably take the responsibility of planning. If you can let others worry about destinations and logistics, you're along for a wild ride, follow the leader and cast your vote when needed. You're on the trip to relax, not stress. Recommend some planning options. You're the backup leader. Uh, worries most about travel plans. Yeah, I'd be the first guy. Okay, calculating my results. Here we go. Which Hogwarts house would I be in? I would be in... Oh. Are you guys ready? Where do you think I would be in? That's right. I would be in Gryffindor. I would be in Gryffindor, Johannes. That's a long way around to answer that question for you, only because I didn't really know the answer to it, and I had to figure it out by taking a quiz. So I took the quiz. I'd be in Gryffindor. Would you? Would you be in Gryff Gryffindor? Oh, my goodness. Bob, do we have time for any more questions? Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo, yes. Okay, this one is from Corey in the United States. What's Corey say? It says, Hi, James. 13 years ago, I started listening to Titus' story in Final Fantasy X. I have played the game several times and know most of the story by heart. Well, that's great. However, for the first time in 13 years, I finally beat the game. Sheesh, that took a while. <laughs> that's all right. You know what? It takes, it does. It would take me that long. I've, I mean, look, I, I voiced it how many, almost 18 years ago, and I've never beat the game. So that's all right. In dee, yes. It still meant just as much to me now that I'm 27 than it did when I was 14. Isn't that amazing? That's, I, you know, I just got a break for a second, Bob. I, like at New York Comic Con and all the cons I went to this year, so many Final Fantasy X fans, so many people saying they grew up with this game. And I, I would, you know, ask them, how old were you when you started playing? They'd be like, I was 10, I was 12, I was 14. 
And now they're these adults, you know, guys with like big beards that are like five times my size and going, you know, I, I played this when I was a little kid, you know, and, and, and people getting choked up and stuff. It's, it's amazing. If Final Fantasy X, if you don't know the game, it's a, it's a big game. It was a huge game. It was the first game to really have voices in it like that. And I voiced the main character, Titus. Some people say Titus. You can say Titus. It's all right. Uh, in, the, in the game, they never said his name. So you wouldn't know. Uh, in the the sequels and such, they said it, and so that's it. And it's pronounced Titus, but that's okay if you say Titus. Anyways, go ahead, Bob. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, yes. It's in the credits as the voice of Titus. Uh, when I saw your name in the credits as the voice of Titus, I audibly gave you a shout out. Knowing you were the voice of Titus didn't ruin any of the story for me. Just made me appreciate your work more. Oh, that's great. A lot of people, yes, yeah, see, a lot of people may not know that I was Titus or Ratchet. Or Johnny Test when they think of Obi-Wan. Or they may not know that I was Obi-Wan because they're a Johnny Test fan. Or they may not know that I was Johnny Test because they're a Titus fan. Or, you know, they may not know that I was Fred Flintstone because they're a Ratchet fan. So, anyways, there you go. Yes. Yes, yes. So, no, I love everything you do. And even if you don't read this on the Jatcast, well, we are. Guess what? No, I try to faithfully listen to the podcast every time you post a new episode. It's the highlight of my drive to work every morning. Well, another yeah, everybody's driving to work and listening to it. That's great. That's awesome. Okay. I did actually have a question for you. Oh, good. Let's see. All right. What do you what what say you, Corey? It says since I finished Final Fantasy X, I moved on to ten two. Oh yeah, I was just talking about that. And there are parts where it is supposed to look like Titus, but isn't. That's right. There's a character in there. Yes. Did you voice those parts as well? If you did, it is audibly different from Titus, though similar. Were you given any direction to make him sound similar to Titus, or was it all your idea? Wishing you and your family the best, and I will keep you in my prayers. Though we may not, though we may differ on a few biblical beliefs, I would still can, like to consider you a brother in the faith. Oh, well, that's very cool. That's very nice. Thank you. Best regards, Corey. Uh, P.S. I found a t-shirt of Titus laughing with the caption, ah, ha, 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 ha. Bob, don't feel obligated to do the laugh or ask James to. I understand James's stance on it all too well. Would you still be willing to sign it should I meet you at a convention, or would it be a little too tri trepidatious? No, 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 no. See, no, Corey, you're, you're misunderstanding. I, I have absolutely no problem with the laugh. I think it's funny. It, it makes me laugh. Ah, ha, 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 ha. It, it makes me laugh. That's just how I laugh. No, it's not. It's not how I laugh. But, um, and Bob, by the way, I liked your impression. Come on, Bob, give a, do a better impression than that. Oh, uh, ha, 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 ha. You sounded like you were crying. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, I, 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 of course I would sign anything, uh, you have for that. I, Joe Hogan, one of my dearest friends, uh, who's just an amazingly talented artist, made a wonderful poster. And yeah, I think you can get it on his, uh, you go to Joe Hogan art dot com and check out his stuff and he made a great titus laughing poster and uh no it's great stuff so uh, absolutely love the titus laugh love talking about it i have no problem talking about it at all um and i like Corey that you made bob do the titus laugh there there you go so your question was uh did i voice the other character yes in final fantasy 10 2 the sequel i did voice the other character in fact i was just talking about this at new york comic-con uh, Xu Yin. Yeah, Xu Yin is the character, and that is me voicing him. And we did very, very purposely, uh, myself and the director, Jack Fletcher. Um, sorry, if you all hear noise in here, it just got noisy in here. Because some uh, my daughter's got the water on upstairs in, in the other room there, and it's making... Oh, it just got quiet. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> that's what happens when you do your podcast in your house, in your recording studios in your house. Somebody... Turns the water on in the other room and you can hear it. Anyways, yes, Shu Yin was a character and I I um I purposely made him sound a little different than Titus because he wasn't really Titus, but he kind of was and all of that. So yeah, he was like he was like evil Titus. He would have laughed like this. I wish he had a laughing scene. That would have been great. All right, Corey. Thanks for that. That's a great one, man. Thank you. And thank you so much for sticking with me all these years and playing Final Fantasy and all that stuff. That's that's wonderful. Thanks for listening to my story. All right, Bob, what else we got? Oh, and do it and do it and do it do and do it. Yeah. Um, yes, okay. Uh no, uh, yes, okay, yes. Um, yes, and yes, and yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Are you gonna you gonna read one here? Let's see. Uh, boy, there's a lot from Thanny Catcher. Remember Thanny? He was on the one podcast. He started calling me Jimmy and then it was a misunderstanding. And, but he's, his name's Thanny. Thanny, I see all your, you always send me, uh, emails here. God bless you, my friend. Look at this one. I love this. Thanny just said, and you can do this folks. 
If you want to just send me something saying, hey, he says, hey, James, have the best day of your life today. Regards, Thanny. God bless you, Thanny. I hope you have the best one too. That was very sweet. He just sends me uh, emails all the time. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, what do we got? Oh, what do we got? What do we got, Bob? Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo. Yes. This is from Isabel in the United States. Isabel. Hello, Isabel. Yes, it says, beginning note, it would be great if you could read on the podcast, but if you don't have time, I understand. Well, look at that. We're reading it. All right, Bob, go ahead. Well, I have been admiring you for a while and mainly just know you for being Johnny Test, but I realized you were much more than that. Look at that. We were just talking about this. Well, yes, in WD, yes. I follow you on Instagram and listen to your podcast and think you're amazing. Well, thank you, Isabel. That's very sweet. Speaking of Johnny Test, LOL, a quick, hopefully question. Sometime a few weeks ago, I heard the show was coming back in 2020. We were just talking about this as well. Yeah, in WD, yes. But I don't know if, if I would be the only one who would believe it. So my question is, do you believe it? I just thought talking to someone who was part of the show would make the answer more believable. Well, <laughs> thank you, Isabel. Uh, yes, so uh, the, the question is, is Johnny Test coming back? I, you know, I don't know. I can't answer that. I can't answer that question. I know that I've heard and seen the same things you all have. They put out some YouTube videos and stuff and have hinted around at it. Who knows? Who knows if there'll be, you know, I, I, but here's the thing. I really do hope they would cast me as the voice of Johnny again, don't you? And not do, try to do a reboot or try to get somebody to voice match me. Because I love the character of Johnny Test. And some of you that listen may go, oh, Johnny Test. But you know, you, people either love Johnny Test or hate Johnny Test. I love Johnny Test. I think it's a fun show. Scott Fellows, who created it, is just a fun, funny, sweet, sweet guy. And he just, here's what I love about Johnny Test. If you think of it's obnoxious or not, it's just a goofball cartoon. And isn't that what cartoons are supposed to be? It's just silly fun. And so we, as a cast, always had such a great time doing it. Trevor Duvall, one of my dearest friends, uh, plays Dookie. Um, and before him, Louis Trurillo did and did a wonderful job as well. And then Louis moved out of the country to another country and he wasn't able to continue to, to voice Dookie. And then Trevor took over in the last couple of seasons and did a wonderful job. And Ian James Corlett, who's just uh, another dear friend of mine, played he, ta- he totally played my dad. Um, and he made his meatloaf and it was bleh. And then everybody, so the rest of the cast is in Canada, but, um, but I would record here, but I love Johnny test. I hope that if they bring it back, I hope they do bring it back. And I hope that if they do bring it back, they cast me as Johnny because I don't think they should try to get anybody else as it. And I hope all of you would be very vocal if they tried to do otherwise. Okay. So let them know. Uh, DHX Media is the company now that produces it. it. Used to be Cookie Jar, and then DHX bought it from Cookie Jar, and uh, and they're all great people. The folks at DHX, as far as I have uh, known and worked with. So if I don't know if they have any social media or whatever, but you know you can you can tell them, hey, if you bring back Johnny Test, please make sure it's all the original cast. Please don't don't change the cast, okay? Especially James Arnold Taylor. <laughs> Okay. All right. There you go, Isabel. Thank you. Oh, and doobity dee. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is one from Kristen in uh, Delaware in the United States. Yes. And Delaware is in the United States, Bob. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Hi, James. I love listening to your podcast when I'm at work. Well, look at that. People listen on their drive to work, on their ad time at work, all of that. I hope you're working still, though. Oh, you no. Know, yes. Yes. Says, just wondering, what has been your favorite project to work on as a voice actor? Wow. Okay, so people always ask me what's my favorite character and what's my favorite episode of this, that, or the other. But nobody's, I don't know if anybody's ever asked me what's my favorite project I've ever had to work on as a voice actor. And I don't know if I can answer that, uh, Kristen. I hope I'm saying it right, Kristen. K-R-I-S-T-E-N, Kristen. Um, I, I love every job I do. I really do. I love this podcast, and this is part of my voice work. I love Clone Wars. I love Johnny Test. I love Ratchet and Clank. I love Final Fantasy. I love Fred Flintstone. I love Spider-Man and Flash. I love voicing the Flash. Um, I love working with all the actors that I get to work on shows with. Oh, you know, there's a show that I'm on now that I can actually talk about that I haven't been able to talk about. I've been holding my tongue for so long. But it's called Lego City Adventures, and it's on Nickelodeon. If you know this show, I'm on the show. I'm the narrator on the show, and I'm Tippy the Doorman, Tippy Doorman. 
and, and, and a bunch of other characters here and there. But those are my two main characters. So I hope you're all watching Lego City Adventures. It's a really fun show. I love doing that show. Why? Because I love the cast. I love all the people I get to work with. So I'm really the most blessed, fortunate man on the planet to get to do what I do for a living and love it. So I don't know what my favorite project has been. Um, there's too many. And I've been doing this now for 34 years. I've, I've been voicing characters and working in radio and stand-up comedy and uh, voice acting. So it is is so hard to say, but I think that's a, that's a lovely question. And uh, all of them, all of the above. <laughs> and I, I, I hope one of the, my favorites is one of your favorites. I don't know what that means, but there you go. All right, Bob, what else we got? Okay, yes. Indubitably, uh, yeah, do. Let's do. Let, we have one from Josh. It says, Hey, Jet, just wondering about the animated movie Animal Crackers, what it was like working with all of the celebrities, and what it was like working with Patrick Warburton and Danny DeVito. P.S. I take your advice on drinking water. I use Encounter and enjoy your Jet 365 videos. Oh, that's very cool. So, Encounter, what Josh is talking about uh, with Encounter is it is a meditation app. Visit EncounteringPeace.org, EncounteringPeace.org, okay? And they are free meditations. They are Christian, okay? So if you're not a Christian, just know that they are going to talk about biblical Bible verses because they're meditations on Bible verses. So you don't have to be Christian to listen to them. They're really cool. They're great meditations. If you're just trying to find a good place to meditate and learn some wisdom, these are uh, exactly that. A uh, fellow Drew Dickens does them, and uh, I think they're wonderful. I, I contribute to his ministry, and I, I listen to these uh, meditations almost every single day with my wife. So I encourage you. So that's great, Josh, that you do those. That's wonderful. And I love that you're drinking water. In fact, oh, I was going to, you know what? My, my water got moved out of here. I'm not, I was going to take a drink of water. Uh, all right. Anyways. And thanks for uh chat 365 videos. Yes. So, uh, animal crackers is a movie that should be coming out very soon. Uh, I believe on Netflix, finally, after many, many years of it sitting in distribution purgatory, <laughs> we'll say, Kind of in limbo, my 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 dear, dear, dear friend, Scott Christian Sava, who created the Dreamland Chronicles. If you don't know the Dreamland Chronicles, go online, search the Dreamland Chronicles. And, and parents, these are great books uh, for your kids to read. They are great adventures. They're comic books. They're graphic novels created by Scott Christian Sava. They are fantastic. He also crea he's created many other stories. Um, and I, I, I love all of his stories. Uh, Ed's Terrestrials and uh, just so many great things. And he created Animal Crackers. And it's a movie I did. And guess what? Another person that is in the movie Animal Crackers with me is my daughter, Lydia Rose Taylor. It is her film debut that she's in. Now, she's been on If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. If you watch the TV show, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, my daughter Lydia plays a character on that as well. And so do I. Uh, we're both on that together. But her first voiceover job was Animal Crackers. And she plays the child in it the main if you go and online and watch the trailer for animal crackers you'll see little girl daddy, daddy, you know and doing this little boy that's my daughter it's my my little lydia rose and she plays the child to john krasinski and emily blunt and danny devito's in it and patrick warburton's in it and and you know who plays my brother in this movie that's right ian mckellen sir ian mckellen plays my brother and um gilbert gilbert godfrey jenny always very good and patrick warburton I've worked with Patrick on many different things. There was a TV show called Game Over. I, I worked with him on that. Patrick is a wonderful human being. What a great humanitarian. Uh, very humble man. He he does so much for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Uh, he's an amazing golfer. He's a wonderful guy and uh, a, a beautiful human being. I, I love him as Putty on Seinfeld the most. But he is in uh, Animal Crackers along with all those other wonderful people. Raven Simone as well. Harvey Firestein. Tara Strong plays my my wife in in the film. Uh, it's a wonderful movie, and I believe it will be coming out on Netflix soon, and that's wonderful, and I can't wait for you all to finally see it because it has been in distribution um, limbo for many years. So there you go. All right, you know what, Bob? I think we probably should start wrapping it up. Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo. We did a lot of letters, though. Yes, well, you know, we'll do more emails here. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is more episodes where we actually just concentrate on the emails and answer some questions and stuff. So uh, there you go. So you'll be back, Bob. We'll do some Bob episodes very soon. Oh, yes, and doobity dee and doobity doo. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. And thank you all for listening to James Arnold Taylor Podcast. It is back. We've got a new season. We'll be coming back with more stuff, more to come indeed, and more fun things, and more fun stories, and more fun voices. And more of your letters and emails and questions and stuff, comments. 
and thumbs ups and hopefully no thumbs downs. Please follow me on Instagram and uh, Twitter and Facebook if you want. I'm not on Facebook much, so uh, there you go. But also, please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're listening to this on iTunes, please give me a five-star rating. Five stars would be wonderful. I would love you forever. And the force will be very, very strong with you. There's a little Obi-Wan Kenobi for you. And uh, please write a review because I'll probably read it on the show if you write a review at iTunes as well. If you're on Spotify or someplace else, uh, well, then I am going to... They don't really have a place where you can add comments and stuff. But if you can, if there is ratings on on any place where you're listening to the podcast, please give it a good rating. I, I would greatly appreciate that because I so appreciate all of you taking the time to listen to the show. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a nice big breath and we're going to think about the things in our life that we want to accomplish this week. Okay, let's take a nice big deep breath. Ready? One, two, three. We're going to, we're going to take in four seconds of air. We're going to hold it for seven seconds. We're going to blow it out for eight seconds. Ready? One, two, three. Here we go. Try to do that as much as you can. If you can do that four more times while I'm saying all this stuff at the end of the show, that'd be wonderful. Here's what I want you to think about when you're doing all this stuff. Picture you at your best, okay? Picture you at your best. Take some time today. Take some time this week to picture you at your best achieving the things you really want to achieve. And then make notes and write down in journal as to how you can actually go about achieving those things. If it's all such a huge fantasy for you to achieve the things that you want ask yourself is it actually fantasy like uh, things that are completely unrealistic or is it unrealistic or is it realistic but I feel it's unrealistic right now because I don't believe in myself enough aha if you don't believe enough in yourself I want you to hear this right now I believe in you I do with all my heart okay I believe in you I know you can do it Please, please, please stay in touch. Keep listening. More to come. This season of the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, we are going to inspire you in new and exciting ways. I can't wait. Some more characters, new characters, fun stuff coming up. And your phone calls we are going to get to at some point very soon in this season of the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Oh, Mr. Announcer Guy. Oh, yes, James. Close us out. You got it, man. Okay, man. Let me finish. Sorry. Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of Yumigo Inc. Recorded at Chat Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking Myself, the podcast, copyright 2019, all rights reserved. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's read a page from James Arnold Taylor's book, Jat 365. Ooh, this is a good one. This is day 112. I'm going to read it as who? Who am I going to read it as? I'll read it as Johnny Test. Okay. Day 112, accept success. The only way to truly succeed is to accept that you may fail along the way. Bummer. No, no, Johnny, it's not a bummer. It's totally true. The only way you can actually find out that you succeed is if you actually fail. That's right, Johnny. Very good. So what can you give up to succeed? What can you give up to succeed? That's the question in the book. So think about that as we close out this show, this episode of the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. What can you give up this week to make you succeed? That could be a a habit. That could be something you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. What can you give up? It could be something, uh, it could be a negative word or a thing you say about yourself. You can give it up. So you can succeed and head towards succeeding. Picture it in your head. Think about it when you're thinking of nothing. Success, success, success. Good stuff, okay? I believe in you. God bless you. Even if you don't believe in him, he believes in you. And so do I. And I'm praying for you. All right. Thanks for joining us here on the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. We'll talk to you again very soon. The show's coming back. It's back, baby. Okay, Hank. What? That wasn't me. Oh, that wasn't you? That was me saying that. I sounded like you. Yeah, whatever. Bye-bye. No, no, I do the bye-bye. Okay, do it. Bye-bye. No, that was you. Bye-bye. That was you. Yes. Goodbye.